morning, everybody. Slightly too early. <laughs> I was a little bit early there, wasn't I, Rish? Good, morning, good afternoon, everybody. It's not even morning unless you're in Queensland, Western Australia, or possibly even South Australia, then it might be still morning. Um, welcome to this afternoon's um, webinar. Uh, that Rish and I are putting on for for you for the partners. Everything new with Wheel Visa debit cards and a little bit more. Um, we're really excited um, to be able to share this with you. Uh, obviously, a lot of you will have your own accounts that have been migrated now to Visa. You've been dealing with clients that have been migrating to Visa. The buzz in the place is just phenomenal um yes there i'm not going to lie and say that there haven't been any any little hiccups like anything there is always you know one or two things that you can't account for but oh my god it has just been amazing so we're really really excited um by what what visa is going to bring for wheel i don't want to underestimate or anybody out there to un underestimate what this has taken. This has honestly been over 12 months in the making. Um, it's something that we all knew they needed to do um, for their clients um, and obviously our accountants and bookkeepers are clients as well. So um, welcome. We're really excited and can't wait to show you um, the platform, answer any questions that you might have. So if we jump to the next slide. Um, with me today is the beautiful Risha. Um, some of you may or may not have met Risha um, via email or your clients may have met her. She's one of our customer success team, the most glamorous of the females in that team, eh, Rish? Um, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, and is amazing at, I, just a little plug for Risha here, is amazing at talking to clients who are maybe potentially looking at moving away from wheel um, for whatever reason, we asked Rish to reach out to them and have a chat to see if there's anything that she can do to assist them. And she's amazing, like just absolutely amazing. Your hit rate what must be at least 95 96% of being able to convert those clients to stay um, because they didn't know about certain things or they weren't set up correctly. Um, so Rish has many, many um, bows, many strings to her bow, I should say. Thank you. Um, and of course, myself, um, Maz, I think most of you will will know me, um, been, been with Wheel for a couple of years now as the partner manager. So we'll jump onto the next slide quickly, Rish, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, so just a little bit of housekeeping. The session will be recorded and it will be shared with you. And it is also available on the partner content hub page. So if you aren't aware of the partner content hub page, could you please jump onto our website, go to the partners tab, Go all the way, probably three quarters of the way down the page, enter in your email and submit it, and you will then have access to the content page, which holds all the recordings to any of the previous webinars that we've run and a plethora of resources that you can use for yourselves and for your staff and clients. Any questions? We are encouraging the questions. If you wouldn't mind putting them in the Q&A function at the back, uh, sorry, on the bottom there, and we will answer them at the end. There is a little bit of a caveat there. Um, this is still fairly new to Rish and I, even though we've played with it as much as we possibly can. We think we've got the answers, but if we don't, we won't pretend we do. We'll let you know that we haven't got them. We will share the questions and answers along with the recording as well, okay? So all the questions will be answered at the end of the session. Okay, so what are we covering off today? why we made the move to Visa. And I'm not going to take away Rish's limelight because she's actually got some really good things to share there. But the main reason, look, there, was, there wasn't any one main reason except for that it is going to really send wheel into the rest of this century and into the next one. It's going to provide far more functionality uh, in the long run, but also currently now, you know, the ability to be able to provide a physical card, we're going to have reduced FX rates, um, we'll, we'll be accepted at far more merchants than what we, we were with MasterCard. So there's a lot of reasons why we made the move. Many benefits that it brings to you. So Rish is going to go through those as well. What are the benefits that this brings to you and to your clients? Okay, and most of you are our clients as well because you use the product internally for yourselves too. Um, how the new tool, how the new cards tool works. 
So we've got a new tool, um, which I've already shared with a number of you um, in different meetings that we've had, and the feedback has been phenomenal. So I again, I don't want to take away from Rish. I'll let Rish show you those. But the tool is, fan is, is phenomenal, the ability to be able to um, see all the card information in one place. And just a little bit of an update on bills. There's some awesome things that we've introduced into bills. And in the next little while, you're going to continue to see more and more features um, added to the bills platform. And then obviously at the end, we will go through the Q&A. So we're going to jump into a poll now, um, poll time. So some of you may know this, some of you may not. What is Wheel's current FX rate? 2.5%, 2%, 1.5% or 95%? Rish? I can't you vote. Know. You can't I, vote. But I do know it. <laughs> so what is Wheel's new FX rate? Do I get to share it? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> no, look, I'm sure you will have seen from our many, many emails in January that we have a very shiny new FX rate of 0.95%. Um, before I get stuck into the FX rate, I'd love to just echo Maz, Maz's sentiment. This was an extremely large project for us internally. I'd liken it to changing out the plane engine while it's mid flights. And we really could not have done it without each and every one of your active partnerships. So from us to you, thank you. Yeah. I will uh, get us to move over to the next slide, please. All right, perfect. So look, lower FX rates is one of the main reasons we switched from MasterCard prepaid cards to Visa debit cards. So this allowed us to bring our rate down from 2.99% down to 0.95%. So that is $2.04 saved on every $100 <laughs> of foreign currency that your clients spend moving forward. For the exchange rate itself, it will be exchanged at Visa's global standard rate, and that can be found daily live on their website. I'd encourage you all to use this as an opportunity to go back to your clients and get them to go to their banks to understand what their bank's FX rates are. And the goal here is really that you guys once again get, get to become the superstars and save them even more money. The next big win from the switch is better acceptance. Look, the fact of the matter is prepaid cards weren't accepted absolutely everywhere. The most common feedback we've had since launching Wheel is that the cards couldn't be used to purchase things like Google Ads or on Sydney and Melbourne train systems. Moving to Visa means universal acceptance, and that means that your users should never have to use their personal cards as backup ever again. And the third big win is the potential. So this really opens up the door for so much more. One big thing, which has been a long time coming, is the launch of physical cards which I'm allowed to say is coming very, very soon. Um, this is something that yourselves or your client admins will be able to order directly from the platform. And I will show you exactly where in a few moments. This is perfect for those of your customers who travel to less developed countries on a regular basis, are hiring cars often, mm -hmm. or just a little bit more traditional and prefer to feel something a bit more tangible in their hands. Each user is gonna qualify for one physical card. And it will essentially mirror the existing card that's in their Apple or Google wallet in that if they're part of multiple budgets, they'll toggle first in their wheel app and that will read through to the physical card in real time, just as it does the virtual card as it does today. To go back to the plane analogy, switching out the engine mid-flight is the migration of our virtual cards. I would liken physical cards to more legroom because it's something some customers are screaming for, some customers will love, while other customers may not notice at all. Um, but look, we're not we're not done yet by a long shot. Um, we have some pretty big plans for our wheel jets. We want it to be very fast and very sleek. And that means things like international bills, international reimbursements, and one day multi-currency wallets. Because what is better than saving $2.04 on every <laughs> dollars of spend is just no FX fee. Either. that's probably a little bit further down the road so I'd like to take it back um, to what we've got in the product today and I will uh, take over yeah sorry I'm one slide ahead of you guys but I will take over and I would like to show you guys the platform and what's actually new today 
those FX rates for subscriptions are just going to be phenomenal. The savings that businesses are going to get now will be awesome. So under payments along the top, you may have spied out a new card screen. And this is a central platform for you to have a much better view of what each of your users have access to. Previously, you would have to click in and out of each budget and kind of keep a mental tally. But now I can see each of my users. I can click into someone and I can see exactly what budgets they're in, exactly how much they have left. It is much, much easier to be a wheel admin as of today. The primary card is the card that's in each of your users' Apple or Google Wallet. That's the one they're using for in-person purchases. The secondary cards are the online of each budget card. So you'll see using Jane, he is part of multiple budgets, but only has one primary card. And we do that to keep it simple. Um, we know it would be an absolute nightmare to be stood at a cash register typing through your Google app, wallet. What you do instead is you toggle in the wheel app where the budget name and the remaining balance is very, and that reads through to your wallet in real time. So the three dots on the side, this is exciting. This gives you much more control of each user as well. Right now you can freeze cards and issue replacements. This is really great. If there is a risk of fraud or just a concern with a specific user, you can put them on hold until you feel more comfortable with what's happening. And watch this space in a few weeks, potentially, there will be the option to also order physical cards from here. Before I move on, Maz, is there anything you'd like to add on this page? Um, no, I think um, you've given it a really good rundown. I think the biggest advantage there, like the feedback that I've had from partners that I have um, shown this to, is the ability to be able to see all the spend in one place mm -hmm. and what's available, you know, as well. Um, I think that's that's been a big plus, yeah. yeah. So no, great. Also, the last four digits, just to make sure your users are doing the right thing. For example, I can see here that James is drawing down from the sales team budget currently, but if I go to Kimberly, I can see she's actually currently drawing down from the office equipment budget. So you've got a much better real-time view of what your users are doing at any given moment. I think also, Rish, the fact that you can see the subscription cards there that are allocated, so all the cards are there for that one person um, in one place. Yep. So this is for the admins, but we also do have an individual view that every single will, single user will have access to. And this is essentially giving you the card details on the desktop as well as the app. And this is to help you transfer data across much more easily. So for your online subscriptions, you could have Coles, Zoom, LinkedIn, Twilio, anything open. You can access the card details from here and copy them straight across. Now, this is a live demo, so let's see how this goes. All right, let's see if I get the six digit code. I think the other while you're doing that, Rish, the other um, advantage is, is whilst you can get the drill at the group by um, people within the organization, you can also group budgets, uh, sorry, get um, groups by budget. So you can actually look at a budget and see who the members are within a budget and how much they're spending and what they've got available. So you've got those two um, views, yeah? Perfect. So I can now copy those 16 digits across straight to another tab without having to type it out manually. So it's a big win for anyone who does a lot of online activity. And this is a play company, so, you know, you, those <laughs> cards won't work anywhere if you take copies of them. <laughs> yes, the account balance is zero. <laughs> um, the next thing I would like to show you is actually not related to the visa migration, but I quietly working away on a few other things in January because we honestly weren't busy enough. So <laughs> I get to show you a new bills feature and that is the wheel suppliers table. So this is now a central place for you to view, edit and manage and delete your existing supplies from wheel. So this boosts data integrity, ensures that you have a clean interface. Anyone with the permissions as per what you've dictated on the manage users page, will be able to jump into any of your suppliers and edit the details as needed. If they don't have the permissions, that's absolutely fine. Your bill raiser can still change the details when they raise the bill, but your approvers will be notified that they've changed a critical piece of information and your approvers will have to approve that change. 
So I can change the postcode to, let's say, 2001, confirm. And if I click back, postcode is now 2001. So it's much easier to manage supplier changes moving forward. And I think the advantage of this too, Rish, correct me if I'm wrong, like there, it stops the doubling up of supplier information as well. So when we were doing the OCR reading in, depending on what the invoice looked like, there were some double ups, triple ups, different spellings. So this is a great way to negate all that now as well. Yeah, a really great prompt. So there's two office works in this account, well, three, and they've all got different details. So I would call this maybe Office Works New South Wales, mm. if that's what it's for. And I can then easily differentiate the accounts. I could then call this ACT, whatever the relevant additional data point is. So I will uh, stop sharing and I will let you guys take back over. But that is just uh, a little bit about what's new in the platform today. Okay, so let's see um, if we've got any questions um, sitting in the Q&A uh, panel. Um, just let me quickly jump in there. Um, sorry, team. So don't forget any questions that you have, put them in that Q&A panel and we'll go, oh, there's a couple in there and we'll go through them. Um, so... Let me just have a look at what we have there now. I attempted to use our wheel card at Australia Post to pay for a money order where cash, if post debit payments were the only payment option available because I wasn't able to toggle the card in the virtual wallet to debit card, I wasn't able to use my wheel card. I had to use my personal card and request a reimbursement. Okay, that's a very long question. <laughs> um, what I would ask from this user is, I have you had luck now adding the new Visa card into your virtual wallet? If not, please reach out to us directly via help at letswheel.com and we'll absolutely guide you through that process because we definitely want you to be able to spend where you need to. Yeah. So the, the process was that the card would be pushed to, the cards were pushed to everybody, the new Visa cards. So it was just a matter of removing the MasterCard and making sure that the Visa card was added into your Google or Apple wallet and then you would be up and running. Um, and let me tell you, they made sure we all tested it first in the office. Um, we all had to go out and um, and test it before um, it was actually pushed out to be live. So um, it, was, it, it was good. We tested it all internally. Um, okay, another question. Is there any plans to be able to collect Qantas points Look, this comes up, does come up regularly. I'll, I'll answer to this one if you like, Rish. It is, it is definitely on our on our radar. Um, something that we are looking at might not be Qantas points. It may be Virgin, maybe our own. We we like at this stage we are exploring all options. Um, and soon as there's informa more information available, we will definitely share that with you. You know, another option that's come up, you know, keep being very transparent here is the ability to be able to pay, use your, you know, Amex card, for example, to deposit funds into your wheel account to pay for things and then pick up the, the Amex points. So, you know, we are exploring lots of different options to be able to see what the best one would be um, moving forward for, for our clients. So, yeah, great question. Thank you. Um, will the double ups be stopped with MYOB imports too? Rish, I might throw this one to you. Yeah, so I believe we did have a, a little bit of an issue with MYOB last month. If that is still happening in your account, could you please reach out to us directly and we will follow this up because it should not be happening anymore. Yeah, so I think if you if it is still happening maybe, and you reach out to us, sending an email to um, let's help, uh, sorry, help <laughs> at letswheel.com um, and just put a note in the subject um, question from webinar and then put the details in and then the team will know that it came from the webinar. That would be awesome. Um, yep, this was using the new Visa debit card. So I'm assuming that was the first person. So that, look, I find that um, very interesting. I'm not going to say definitely that obviously that it, that it didn't happen because it did, but um, more information would be really, really useful for us um, just to make sure that 
it isn't still happening if it is. So if you wouldn't mind um, definitely getting in touch with us, I don't know who it is because you've come in as anonymous, which is absolutely fine, um, let us know so that we can follow up, make sure that we get that sorted for you. It would be interesting to know how long after your visa card, you got your visa card as well, like how long after that it actually happened. Is there anything else that you think they should provide, Rish, for that? Yeah, look, just to add, um, the user has mentioned they had issues toggling to the debit card in their virtual wallet. Mm. I just want to show you, you should no longer have the MasterCard in your wallet at all. Mm. It could be a conflict between the two being in there at once. So I'd encourage you to definitely make sure the old MasterCard is deleted out of your virtual wallet. Mm. Yeah, good point. Okay, uh, next question. Hi, amazing explanations. Does this mean that, thank you, um, does this mean that we need to update also the card we provided to our suppliers? Absolutely. So I think there were four things that we highlighted and through um, communications that went out from the marketing team. The first one was obviously updating your bank details so your new wheel bank details would have needed to be updated to the bank and anybody else e.g suppliers that you had given those details to um, the other one was subscriptions um, obviously wheel provides an individual card for every subscription so with the new visa cards they were getting new cards so you would need to update the payment details with with each of your suppliers as well what did I forget, Rish? I always say there's four. I've just gone through three. What was the fourth one? So bank details, mm. online cards, in-person cards. And subscriptions. Subscriptions. Okay, beautiful. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Wait, yep. I just I always know there's four. <laughs> Uh, and Alison, um, I can pick up the, so the duplication is in supplier name. So yes, absolutely. This uh, suppliers table is your new superhero. I would really work uh, to ensure that it matches the suppliers in MYOB so that every time someone raises an invoice moving forward, it's not going to create a new supplier. They can just pick from your pre-approved existing list. Yeah, beautiful. Um, Alison, let us know if that didn't answer your question. Um, okay, next one. Is there a way to differentiate all the cards in the wallet so we know which budget we are using, e.g. different colours, or can we get them labelled? Um, yeah, go, Richard. I, I, I can yeah. answer this. Um, yeah. So there should only ever be one card in your Apple or Google wallet per wheel account, but I appreciate that some of you may be part of several accounts. Uh, so good news for Android users, so Google Wallet, you name your cards but that isn't the most obvious indicator so what we can do and help you with is we do have a few color card options so there is a off-white there is a lime green and there is a teal if mm. you would like to choose from any of those options to help you differentiate between your cards in your apple or google wallet please simply email our support team that's help at letswheel.com with the exact card color that you want to switch which of your accounts to just remember that's that's entities so that's not budget so you, that, that's you can't have a different car color card for each budget because you can only have one card in your wallet google or apple wallet at any one time the multiple colors is if you have multiple entities mm -hmm. um, that you need to spend out of um and i'll just add on this question too only because i've had this asked of me twice now in 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 the last probably two weeks and that is, um, I seem to always have to swipe now to be able to see which card, what happened to my list. I like the list. When you look at the app in the top right-hand corner, there is a magnifying glass. So when your cards come up, there is a magnifying glass. If you click on that magnifying glass, it will actually list you the budgets and you can select the budget from there as opposed to swiping left or swiping right. I never liked the swiping left and swiping right because I was never one of those people that went on those sorts of apps, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so that um, hopefully that that has an answered that question as well. Okay, look, I think we've um, we've got another five minutes. Um, we, we said we wanted to be finished on time at 12.30 because we are very conscious of everybody's time and we really do appreciate you jumping on board. Um, the poll, would you like Maz or Risha to get in touch? So is there anything further that you would like to know, that you would like to see, 
Um, if so, please let us know. Yes, give me a call, not send me an email, not right now, thank you. Um, and then that helps us prioritise who, who we should get in touch with um, first. For those of you that are looked after by Gadge as your partner manager, he's on paternity leave, re returning next Monday. So um, he'll be back after, after having, um, they've got their, had their second child, which was very exciting. Okay, so on, on that note, um, we don't have, seem to have any other questions, so that's great. I think we can give everybody a couple of minutes back in their day, Risha. Yeah, I'd like thank to you. again yeah. extend from me personally and on behalf of the organisation, your patience has been amazing through this process. Um, your, you know, your business is always valued, your support is valued, so thank you very, very much. Um, on that note, I will say uh, goodbye, enjoy the rest of your day and um, look forward to the next webinar. Rish, you've done amazing. Thank you very much for helping me out. Thank you for having me. Have a good day, everyone.